Few are brilliant enough that their very name transcends their craft. In the art of medicine, one modest yet inventive man transformed the field of cardiovascular treatments. Rising above the banks of the mighty Rio de la Plata lies Buenos Aires, Argentina. It was here in 1945 that bus driver Andres Palmas and his young bride Nelly welcomed their new son, Julio. An inquisitive child, Julio's earliest memories were not of medicine, but other interests, interests that would follow him into adulthood. I should have been an engineer, probably, because when I was young, I was very interested in mechanical things, uh, particularly cars and uh, speedboats and things like that. Uh, but I don't know, for some reason, I must have picked medicine and stuck with it. During his early studies, Julio met and fell in love with a beautiful 17-year-old, Amalia. After a five-year courtship, they were married. By then, medicine had beckoned. And after finalizing medical school and a radiology fellowship in Argentina, Julio was looking for something that his homeland couldn't provide. Uh, there were no organized residencies then. When I went through it, and they're more like attendantships. Uh, you stick to a professor and you stay with him until you learn your trade and you're kicked out you be on your own. Um, the one lucky shot that I probably had was that I got exposed early on to what was going on in the U.S. Through the literature, I got interested in one particular author who I eventually met and became my lifetime mentor, actually. He was Stuart Reuter. Stuart invited Julio into his radiology residency training program and eventually joined Reuter's staff at the UC Davis Medical Center in Northern California. Julio continued perfecting his craft under Dr. Reuter's masterful tutelage but it wouldn't be until a fateful day in 1978 when he would realize his true calling. For it would be on this day that Palmas would cross paths with Andreas Grunzig, the leader of a new pioneering therapy called balloon angioplasty. A very important moment in my life was actually having the opportunity to hear uh, Andreas Grunzig as a visiting professor in 1978 in one of his first lectures in the United States. Grunzdig was very graphic in his descriptions and uh, he explained the limitations of angioplasty in such a way that anybody with a mechanical mind like mine uh, was easy to elicit the, the concept of why not to place a metal mesh on top of a balloon and prevent all that. Unbeknownst to Palmas, other physicians like Dr. Charles Dotter of the University of Oregon had attempted to deploy coil-like artery supporters in vessels with little success. Perhaps naive, but unquestionably inspired, Palmas told an encouraged rooter of his idea. Unlike earlier failed attempts to develop such a device, Palmas's design would actually marry the Grunzig and Dotter theories utilizing a balloon expandable mesh device that would stay in the artery to reinforce the vessel after the balloon was removed. Reuter sent his young protege to the lab to fulfill his quest. I've been playing largely at home with prototypes and things that I could do my own hands. But the problem, the, I, I noticed that the main limitation was in miniaturization. I needed a special equipment. Equipment unavailable at UC Davis. But once again, fate stepped in. The University of Texas was offering me a significant amount of research time in my new job and also that there was a machine within the campus that I could actually make this. Um, 
So all these facilities you know, attracted me to Texas and I I've been here since uh, 1983. Reuter and Palmas moved their practice to San Antonio. Without delay, early prototypes, newly tabbed by a medical journal editor as The Stent, were fabricated and ready to test. I came here with the purpose of developing the stent, uh, so I, I had the sense of of, of, of there was no time to waste. Within months after I arrived here, I had already uh, implants in animals, and by the end of that year, I already had my paper ready for presentation, and it got presented at the RSNA. Uh, we accumulated an enormous amount of data that actually formed an important body of information that supported the clinical trials uh, in that they proved feasibility for the FDA to approve these clinical trials. And then the long years of clinical trials followed. But the medical profession and industry were slow to respond. After all, hadn't this been tried before? And other newfangled modalities like the hot tip laser and atherectomy, devices which didn't leave a foreign metal structure behind, were undergoing trials. I already had run out of money and research money. Uh, the department has supported me to a great extent, but uh, obviously they were sending me out to get my own funds. But I had, in, in the meantime, the opportunity to meet another person that was uh, doing a similar type of work. Uh, it was Richard Schatz. Uh, when Richard was exposed to the idea of a stent, he loved it. But the most important thing is that he did find uh, for me a uh, capital investor, was Philip Romano a person who was not in the medical industry, was actually a restaurateur. And uh, Philip fell in love with the idea too, uh, invested a significant amount of money, uh, only when the condition that a, a commercial entity be formed, of course, being a businessman he is, he wanted to give it uh, a commercial frame to the project. The collaboration with cardiologist Schatz, which inspired the extension of stent treatments into the coronary anatomy and the infusion of research cash by Romano, provided Palmas with the final ingredient for success. Soon a company, then not in the vascular business, came calling. Uh, the first time that we had the opportunity to talk to a Johnson Johnson representative, uh, they immediately felt attracted to the idea. Uh, it went along perfectly with their interest to getting into the vascular business, which at the time Johnson Johnson was not, at least in the catheter area. And they wanted an interesting new project to get into the business rather than go the traditional way. What is fascinating is that Johnson Johnson hired a consult company to help them decide whether the stent idea was a viable one from the business point of view. And they made the unanimous decision that that was not a viable idea and there was a terrible uh, proposition for Johnson Johnson to get in. Nonetheless, they disregarded the advice of the company and they went ahead and licensed it and became the most <laughs> successful project, uh, uh, at least in, in this area, that they, they have ever made. With strong backing by J&J, &J, the stent took off. FDA trials, first in the iliac arteries, followed by other vascular anatomy, proved successful worldwide. Soon after, a study in the jewel of all arteries, the coronaries, set forth. But early in this study, Julio awoke one day in San Antonio to alarming news. It was at the very beginning of the coronary trial when I heard, all of a sudden, that Mother Teresa, who I knew very well, got a stent. And the story goes that Mother Teresa was in northern Mexico doing missionary work when all of a sudden developed heart failure, was brought to San Diego, a Scripps Clinic, in an emergency basis, and got an angioplasty with dissection and a stent that night of the admission. And uh, the stent was still an experimental device, and for her to receive one had to be incorporated as an experimental subject which Mother Teresa obviously uh, acknowledged and accepted. Uh, so the following morning when I learned of it, uh, I, I definitely panicked for one thing, because the stent was uh, 
is still in trials, and I could see uh, headlines saying, uh, Paul Mass Dent kills a saint. History has proven that Julio's concerns were all for naught. Mother Teresa, like countless other patients worldwide, had her health restored all due to an idea that has given birth to a revolutionary field now called endovascular intervention. And for the humble Dr. Julio Palmas, who still toils in his San Antonio research lab looking for an even better stent, his indelible mark on medicine will go down in history as one of the greatest of all time. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the International Society of Endovascular Specialists Honoree for Excellence in Endovascular Innovation, Dr. Julio Palmas.